total twilight zone on the border situation. Detention center has hair salon, child care, basketball courts, gym, soccer field for the illegals as a magnet to draw them up here. The suites have flat screen televisions. It says the immigrants uh, are unfamiliar with bathroom facilities and it's causing problems. And this is something that I almost did a report on a year ago. It's now being reported on by ABC News, CBS News, The Washington Times. Richard Reeves pointed out that the big truck stops now. I'm going to send a camera crew over today to do this. I wanted to do this a while ago, but now it's in the news. People will believe me. That the illegals who've grown up uh, in cardboard boxes in Mexico City and other places, I'm not attacking them. I'm just saying this is the culture clash. Don't even have outhouses, basically. They go in the bathrooms and basically crap on the floor or they just leave the toilet paper on the floor in a corner. And anybody who lives on the border knows this or even near it. You go in bathrooms now, even at restaurants or whatever, and there's a pile of crap stained toilet paper in the corner. I mean, that's just how crazy all of this is getting. And just in the name of taste, it was late last year, about eight, nine months ago, We were on a road trip in the bus and Richard was driving it. And we kept noticing at truck stops it was really bad. Because, I mean, you go in these, these, these stalls, it's just unbelievable. And so they have signs up saying in Spanish, don't do it. Put the paper in the toilet. Paper in toilet in Spanish. And I couldn't find it this morning on my phone because Richard and I had photos of it. We're going to call Richard. He's not here right now. Uh, he's up in Dallas, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the name of the truck stop that's the closest, and we're gonna send a film crew in there and show it, because this is the type of thing that can capture people's imagination. TB and scabies are spreading. That's mainstream news. Texas law enforcement volunteer to form Border Patrol Brotherhood, ready to rumble activists to raid congressional town hall meetings. That's some of the news up on. DrudgeReport.com. Hamas detonates bomb, kidnaps IDF soldier, 90 minutes into ceasefire. See, my issue is Hamas is like dragging hundreds of collaborators every week, they call them, around in the streets alive till they die behind motorcycles. And I think that's barbarous and, and, and wrong. And I think it's wrong when Israel blew up a UN school with orphans. I just think it's all horrible. But with a political correct crowd, they just lionize Hamas and then just ignore every atrocity they commit. And I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to be fair. That's what I do. And I'm going to cover the atrocities on both sides. And people in talk radio, you know, people like one way or the other. And I am one way or the other in a lot of issues like the Second Amendment, national security, with the border, the Federal Reserve needing to be abolished, family rights, private property. But when you got tribal warfare going on in both sides committing atrocities, it's like Joe Biggs did a report when he was a staff sergeant, you know, finding a big bomb making facility with plans to kill people in the US. He found this. This was real. This has never been in the news. He had the photos and video of it. Soldiers, you know, shoot video of that. We put a report out showing that there were real terrorists planning to attack the US. And people in the comments were like, why are you pushing the narrative of 9-11 being real and, and of there being terrorists and you know the Afghans are perfect and you, you know you're a traitor? No, no. The globalists are bad, financing the top of Al-Qaeda, but there are real jihadi nutballs that want to come over here and blow stuff up. I mean, that's the truth, folks. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box 
device that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own Detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. There are globalist combines worldwide that are completely amoral and only want power and control. And they will finance communism, they will finance fascism, they will finance militant extremist Islam. They will finance anything that destabilizes nation states so that the globalists can basically then come in as the moderate saviors and recommend a course of action that centralizes the government under their control in the name of meeting an outside threat. And that's why ISIS, IS, Al-Qaeda has been founded since 1979 by the Central Intelligence Agency. They took control of networks controlled by British intelligence from 1900 on. Hitler took control of them during World War II for a short period of time until he was kicked out of North Africa and the Middle East in 1943 by people like my grandfather, my dad's dad. I mean, this is mainline history. And so I'm going to explain it again because they have national shows and articles every week saying Jones says that there aren't any Muslim extremists or Jones says there's no real terrorism or Jones says the government runs Al-Qaeda, but then why are they killing our troops? They think you're stupid. They talk to you like you're three years old. The globalists want trillions of dollars in no-bid weapons contracts. The globalists want to be able to take our liberties domestically because of an outside threat. They want to be able to overthrow stable nation states like Libya, like Syria, and like Iraq that was becoming stable to destabilize the area. And that's the stated Pentagon plan. Even Wesley Clark, the former head of NATO, went public about being at the Pentagon and the plan to carry this out in 2002. And it's bipartisan. Neo-libs, neocons, they're all on board. This is a public operation. They know that the general public is so dumbed down and so unaware of even the three branches of government and geopolitical regions and basic facts that they can write books and white papers at the Council on Foreign Relations saying we run Al-Qaeda and how great Al-Qaeda is and quote how we need Al-Qaeda, speaking of the elite, while getting on the news claiming that Iran is behind Al-Qaeda when it's the opposite group. Now, the public can figure out baseball and football and the minutia of that, so the public can figure this out. The average good old boy can figure out how to work on their truck or how to play fantasy football and can figure out how to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. You can figure this out. There's like a cognitive dissonance, though. Like when I had Obama phone lady in here, and she's coming back in today. Really nice, sweet lady. And, and street smart in a lot of ways, but just totally unaware when I'm going, do you understand statistically and on record that welfare over time makes people poorer and more unhappy and completely dependent on the state? And she goes, but I just want some free stuff. I can't make it working. I'm working a couple jobs, and I can't make it, and I live in a condemned house. A lot of yuppies, a lot of people enjoy looking down on folks that are uninformed and poor. I don't, because I know it reflects back on me, and it'll end up coming back on me and my family. Now, that's a scientific fact that what comes around goes around. It's proven in quantum mechanics. It's proven in common sense, but... I don't need to make the intellectual decision that I want to build her up <coughs> for my betterment. At a base spiritual level, I empathize and want to lift up society and want to see justice. That's called being normal, being from a good family, being a loving person, having your head screwed on straight. But the new world order is all about people not 
having their heads screwed on straight. That's what it comes down to. And just like I, all the time on the street, people go, I really like your show. I, I agree with it on so many fronts, but I don't understand how is our government running Al-Qaeda? I, I know it's in the news. They're giving them weapons and letting them attack countries, but they kill our troops. And I explained to them, have you heard about the famous case in New York City? where a guy put up in the 70s for over a decade billboards saying he had the lowest price on windshield repair or windshield replacement, and he was going around with his employees at night for over a decade before he got caught with a ball-peen hammer breaking windshields every night right below his billboards. And the public didn't catch on to it, and the police didn't catch on to it for 10 years. Strangely enough, they have a composite of that in the, in the movie American Hustle that came out this year with Christian Bale, and, and they talk about that famous case in it. And they say, which is, American Hustle is a true story, that the hustler is the guy that grew up doing that. I, I, I didn't know that. I've got to go look it back up. But the point is that they made a movie about it. And people will finally go, oh, they break the windshield, so then... People come spend money with them. Bingo. Again, I, and for longtime listeners, I know you understand this better than I. And you say, Alex, why are you talking to us like we're five years old? You already are awake. You know what's going on. You were awake probably before you ever heard this show. You got street smarts. I'm talking about the general public, folks, that finally go, oh, yeah. If they finance al-Qaeda and the Taliban to take over Afghanistan... Then they can go kick them out, at least one faction of them, control trillions in opium, trillions in no-bid weapons contracts over 13 years, and transfer wealth from the American people to military-industrial complex, who now is taking over with the NSA and armored vehicles and militarized police, which we pay for with tax money. This is where you pay for your own slavery. Do you understand that now? And most of the time they go, oh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Well, why don't you get it when you tune into the show? Because this is not my opinion. Zbigniew so Brzezinski's written five books, and I've read almost all of them. Scan through his latest. I just don't have time to read whole books anymore. You know, they're 500 pages long. I did get the book and check the quotes I saw online. That they were accurate. And, I mean, he just admits everything. But explains how it's a good thing, and this is again for the elite to sit around and read and legitimize that they're doing something moral and good, controlling world narcotics trade. Oh, we run the narcotics worldwide to control it, because the, there's going to be narcotics trade, and if the good guys don't run it, bad guys will get it, like the Russians, and then they'll take over. Well, you're doing exactly what the Russians did during their most oppressive phase of Sovietism. And you're going after the good people. So obviously, it didn't work out that way. It was a rationale for you to control organized crime. And uh, three or four of the books I read, Brzezinski wrote, I mean, he just admits all this in there. I remember when I was a kid, my dad would explain, no, the government runs the narcotics to control it. And I would say, well, how do you know that? And he said, well, it's in these big Brzezinski books. He's one of the top people that advises and runs things. Plus, we've had family that's seen it working for the government. And so don't ever join the government if they try to come and recruit you. I just grew up knowing all this stuff, and, and it's common sense. It's not like it's rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, how do you end that? You decriminalize the drugs. You control them. You don't legalize them. You decriminalize them, and you run ad campaigns about how losers use them. But instead, they're putting people on the synthetic pharmaceuticals that are just as worse or bad or, 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 or just as bad or worse. And now they've had the drug war for 30 years or longer. Nixon started it where they don't go after the dealers. They go after the users to where now we almost can't legalize it. I've really been thinking about this. And you know why? Because the giant criminal economy 
will only go into other rackets. They've run this corruption so long that there are armies of criminals and scum who don't know how to work and there's not a real economy for them. And so the economy would shut down and they would infest everything else. But you know what, you gotta go ahead and do it because that's short term, long term, it's even worse to let it happen because they're gonna metastasize into every other racket and every other angle regardless. Mexico now has seen their tourism drop by more than half the last five years. And it's set within a couple more years to basically be non-existent. The country has collapsed. And they've got kidnapping and murder and just hell on earth. Over 130,000 dead the last seven years that we know of. Mass graves being found everywhere. And they're probably never going to come back. Unless they were major league reformed with land being given to the poor people and everyone aggressively as vigilantes going after any type of mafia and basically routing the whole group. I'm not normally for people to be hung from lampposts everywhere, but in Mexico is so corrupt that if the entire political elite isn't hung, you, Mexico will never get out of it. And the same thing for Latin America and Africa and Asia and Eastern Europe. I mean, once corruption sets in, it's very hard to dig out. And America is entering that same zone now. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Here's the headlines up at Infowars.com. School plans to put digital tags on students with microchip bracelets to encourage, quote, good behavior. FBI, police turn entire town into checkpoint, interrogate drivers, putting black X's on their hands. Wait till we break that down. Don't fear Ebola, fear the state, an excellent article by Kurt Nemo. Obama signs an executive order to detain Americans with respiratory illnesses, not just Ebola. And now we have Ebola infected U.S. aid workers due to arrive at Emory University Hospital, Atlanta. Now, here's the deal. They hyped the H1N1 scam five years ago, and that was a fraud. But then when there was a real respiratory killer wiping people out all over the U.S., there were local news articles about the pandemic, but it never was national, which meant there was a shutdown basically ordered. And I've talked to medical doctors who said, no, they were told to shut up about it, but that it was the worst they ever saw this last winter, 2013 into 2014. And it's just now ending. Taking three people in my immediate close family. That's how devastating this has been. So I know they ignore real things and then hype fake things. But I think some of this is hype with Ebola, but some of it's not. They don't have some ready-made drug or ready-made vaccine right now. They didn't start the fear-mongering right before this happened. It's now getting up close to 1,000 dead. Those were older numbers yesterday. We were talking about 500 dead. And it could be over 30,000 that have come in contact and could be infected. And there are people that have it in the U.S. and Germany now in quarantine areas, and they're keeping that quiet, but it's come out in the news. And if Ebola starts to spread... The United States is hot, and, and Ebola needs to be transferred by you know, saliva or by touch, and, and it, it dies if it's below like something, 80-something you know, degrees is what I was reading. Uh, we're going to get some virologists on to break this down coming up this weekend on the Sunday show probably or uh, early next week. We're working on it right now to, to understand things. Maybe we get Dr. Sherry Tenpenny on. I know her husband recently died. It's hard to get her on, but she's a virologist. The issue here is that we're watching it very, very closely because Ebola kills more than 90% of the people that come in contact with it. And there aren't really any good treatments that they know of yet. And there's a lot of cases of American doctors uh, that have contracted it and that are dying and others that are, uh, have died and African doctors where they're even foregoing some of the experimental uh, treatments uh, because there's not enough of it and they're giving it to their patients and other medical workers and the medical doctors are just basically dying or preparing to die. And that's very heroic. 
when you see examples of medical doctors like that, it makes you admire what made Western medicine so great worldwide 100 years ago. Because MD medicine 100 years ago was totally trailblazing how to stop infection, how to do surgeries. Uh, I mean, it's just magic compared to the treatments they had that were the old apothecary herbs and things and that, that, that helped and did incredible things as well. There were five or six different schools of medicine, but MD was so amazing that it took the world by storm. Then it became Rockefeller medicine, now eugenics medicine, and has been pretty much ruined at many levels. But you see medical doctors following the ancient system of Hippocrates, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, which they haven't given that oath for at least 20 years in Western medical schools. Now it's carry out bioethics, eugenics operations. And they're creating cult-like, socialist, what are the creatures, the, the, the uh, robots in Doctor Who that go around saying exterminate, exterminate? The Daleks? More and more, they operate like Daleks. And they just shuffle around saying, get rid of the old people, get rid of the mentally retarded, get rid of the infirm. There'll be more money for those that are viable and contribute to society. You can't ever start letting someone decide in government who has value and who doesn't. You decide that by who you marry and have kids with. You decide that by who you associate with. You decide that by what you buy and who you support. What products you purchase. You decide to only have organic food. Pretty soon, it'll, the whole market will be organic. You decide what films you want to see that are liberty-based. That'll become the dominant culture. But you don't have the state directing that. It's always the worst group historically to direct it because special interests will get in there and will do what's good for them, not what is evenly distributed by the voting of the culture, the religion, the ideas, the art, the literature, the music that the public decides to adopt. We have Sumner Redstone force feeding gangster rapping Marilyn Manson to psychologically infect children to make them mentally ill, artificial sociopaths or borderline personality disorder, narcissistic quit bots. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. Ebola. Largest health emergency drill in history underway in New York City. My Fox New York reports. Medications dispensed. Bioterror response prepared by regular Army and National Guard. American Ebola patients returning to USA. Atlanta Hospital to treat. Trump warns, keep them out. Airports on alert to look for symptoms. Feds to test vaccine on humans. Look out. Stricken doc gives experimental serum to coworker. WHO, that's the World Health Organization, warns virus could spread to other countries. Catastrophic loss of life. 100 plus health workers infected. Europe and Asia on alert. Meanwhile, 92 million plus Americans are not working. That's increased by 11,472,000 CNS News reports since Lord Obama got into office. Mission complete. Cloward and Piven shut the economy down, raised taxes and fines and fees hidden in the market to where the working poor can no longer support themselves and are forced to go on welfare as a supplement to working. Largest health emergency drill in history underway. The New York City Department of Health will be conducting a massive emergency preparedness drill at 30 facilities across the city on Friday. And we wondered why they were checking with all the cemeteries around the country with those secret documents we got from mass graves, a million people per cemetery a few years ago. And we wondered well, all the body bags and coffins and the rest of it. And again, if you don't know that the globalists are completely capable of releasing weaponized Ebola in the United States or Europe, to totally take over, that could be their false flag. And of course, they'll have a cure for themselves. And they've already done thousands of admitted lethal tests on citizens, troops, you name it. I remember five years ago, it came out in Bloomberg that they gave 40 homeless people in the Czech Republic an experimental flu vaccine and more than half of them died. 
And then it turned out that's probably what actually spread the real flu. But again, I mean, they'll kill homeless people in a big pharma test, but, but, but they wouldn't release Ebola. They'd shoot Guatemalans and black people up in this country in a secret program telling it was a vaccine. It was really live microscopic worms. You know it as syphilis, brain-eating worms. They'd do that. And they'd be, I mean, they're still doing secret experiments on our troops today that kill them. But hey, they're not suspects to ever be behind Ebola. They wouldn't use that to bring in total control. By the way, Obama signed an executive order. It's up on Infowars.com. And it's definitely tied to Ebola. We should add that to the headline. Obama signs executive order to detain Americans with respiratory illness. We're going to be covering that. And then coming up in the next hour, while all this is happening... Our border is the most open border in the world now because once you get here, you're legalized for at least three years to five years and you're given visas and driver's license. And with the driver's license in now seven states, from Colorado to California, you're allowed to vote with the driver's license. Which is a felony, but no one enforces it. Can you see the, the war-gamed, computerized takeover? This has all been planned out. I don't know if it's going to be a nuke in New York City or Ebola or a dollar collapse or the borders completely collapsing with a whole nother giant wave that makes this one look tiny. What we know is that's already happening. The dollar declining is happening. Starting war with Russia is happening. Turning Al-Qaeda and ISIS loose everywhere is happening. FBI setting up checkpoints and basically federalizing police and, and just showing up from the East Coast to the West Coast to the Midwest, running martial law drills publicly. It's all moving into high gear. And it's like being in a bullet train that goes 200 miles an hour. It starts off at 5 miles an hour and then 10 miles an hour and then 50 and then 100 and then 150 and then 200 and, and then 250. And you just can't believe how fast it's going We've had about 75 miles an hour, and there's a lot more to go on the speedometer. I mean, it's just starting to hammer up. It's like being in a high-powered, 600-horsepower sports car, and you just can't believe how it's hammering down the highway, going faster and faster. The fastest car I was ever in, I wasn't driving it. Charlie Sheen was driving his 600-horsepower Porsche, and just for about 10 seconds, he hammered it down on the highway, and it was going like 150 miles an hour. Just right off the ramp, boom, 150 miles an hour. Just bam, would have kept going right over 230 miles an hour on the speedometer. And, and, and that's the same feeling is just being pressed back in your seat. And the general public's like, hey, football, hey, baseball, hey, basketball, everything's fine. No, everything's not fine. Again, I've got three family members. My great uncle, we didn't know what was going on at that time. They all lived in the, in the same neighborhood, in the, on the same ranch. But the ranch houses were all built up on the road. My great uncle got a respiratory thing, went in the hospital. Died. Then Peter, my cousin, got it, died at home. My uncle was taking care of him. And then he died. It took him a month to die. And, and again, I just bring that up because if there's a real Ebola outbreak, you probably won't even know about it. They've had black plague, bubonic plague popping up. Record number of cases in places like Colorado. It made the newspapers a month ago or so just a few times. I mean, TB is spreading everywhere. Flesh-eating bacteria, MRSA, all of it. And it's hardly even an issue. And that's my point is that there it is, three more diagnosed with rare plague in Colorado. And they just call it the plague. That's Reuters. ABC News also reports. But notice they spin it now. Possible bubonic plague death in Colorado. They know exactly what the black death is. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes, we all fall down. By the way, we have Gravedigger in the computer. I want to go out with that uh, John Harmon, it's, I think it's in your computer up there at the network, or it may be in our computer. 
or just pull up Gravedigger, whoever wants to do it, because I want to go out with about two minutes of Gravedigger. Gravedigger, when you dig my grave, will you make it shallow so I can feel the rain? Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes, we all fall down. Hieronymus Bosch, the German painter, painted that. You say we couldn't see because it was night? <laughs> Day came back for that. I'm going to stop quoting poetry here, ladies and gentlemen. But these are the times that poetry comes to the tongue. Oh, it was dark. But Day came back for that. The black sunshine. Ring around the rosy, ring around the pustule, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes, we all fall down. 500 years ago, they'd have the kids dance in circles and just embrace that the black death was coming their way. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes, we all fall down. And the globalists are enamored with the Black Death. That some estimates are killed as much as 40% of Europe, at least a third. Because the Renaissance came out of that. But not because it reduced population, but because it wiped out the elites. And that's what most historians, you dig into it, it, it shut down the monopolies. And the fact that labor was so cheap in the monopolies. And a lot of people in the countryside who were taking herbs survived. This is on record. And so that's why a Renaissance began. Because guilds were allowed to form that weren't controlled by the central groups, and trade began, and then trademarks began, and then the modern age of commerce began. And it would be called tyranny compared to many of the liberties we've enjoyed, but compared to the old tyranny of the Dark Ages, it was a great boon. But the elite, you can read their writings, are obsessed with the Black Plague, and they talk about how wondrous it'll be once a super plague is released, and the vast majority of the world population is reduced down to nothing. And to give you a subconscious acceptance of it, you see countless History Channel, Discovery Channel shows, The World Without People. They cover it in all the big nightly uh, entertainment shows, the comedy late, late shows. They have the authors on about, let's all be honest, it'd be better with no humans on Earth. We're like rats. We're scum. So that you all believe you're trash, so you all accept you're worthless, and just prepare. 800-259-9231. I want to talk about Ebola, but I want to talk about what's even more important, the real plagues we know are already here of drug-resistant disease. That if you talk about it, that even more of it's pouring in from south of the border where it's completely out of control, you're racist according to Geraldo Rivera. No, Geraldo. I don't want anybody overusing antibiotics. I don't want our big pharma selling it to the big uh, agra to feed it to pigs, chickens, and cows so that I eat it and so my immune system's lowered. And I don't want the Latin American poultry and produce coming in that's even worse. It's not because I don't like brown people, Geraldo. I know it must be easy for Geraldo just to say everybody's racist if they don't accept open borders. They actually have to think about it. And Geraldo's smart. He knows he's playing race politics. But uh, Geraldo, uh, if uh, one of your kids gets TB, you're going to change your mind? Drug-resistant TB and they have to be locked up for the rest of their life? How's that sound? Because, you know, this is reality, folks. This isn't a game. I don't want to just sit here and attack Geraldo Rivera. But he's full of bull. To quote Dan Rather, he's full of prunes. And again, if we should be so open, how about I get to move to Guatemala and get everything paid for if I want? Toll free number 800-259-9231. We'll look more at the situation on the border when Chris... Burgard joins us, who's been doing amazing documentary news shoots down on the border. He got the interview with Zach Taylor, the head of the uh, major Border Patrol retiree union and a former senior uh, Border Patrol uh, 
officer. He's the one that broke down with military precision from the military handbooks. Of course, he has a military background. That this is asymmetrical warfare. And that's what I've been calling it. This is war. That's not rhetoric. This is war. This country is under attack right now by the globalist. Just like Mexico's been under attack by them with destabilization. The globalists take countries down. I'm getting chills, folks, because it's so clear. They take countries down with chaos. Can people not understand that? While they're safe in their government and corporate compound reservations, they bring everything down on us via siege as political control. That's why Israel, a former Israeli government, I'm not saying Hamas works for Israel. I'm not saying Hamas is good. I'm not. What I'm saying is Hamas was founded in the mid-1970s. That's Haaretz, Jerusalem Post, not my opinion, face it, by Israel. Why? To destabilize nonviolent Palestinians so that they wouldn't look legitimate. Like Mahatma Gandhi let the British beat him upside the head with big cane poles, not because he was a wimp, but because he was so strong. Say what you want about him, but the guy dozens and dozens of times would let them knock basically knock all his teeth out and 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 and, and beat him and but but he did that because he knew that the age of the press had come and it was all being exposed and they were losing every time he took a punch. He had no one to hold him, no one to fold him, no one to walk away, no one to run. We try to stop them starting a civil war. We try to stop them starting a physical war being nonviolent. If they start it successfully and are hunting us down and grabbing us, then you know what happens. The gloves are off, and it's very sad. It's just self-preservation. The globalists will get what they want in a giant civil war that will wipe out the police, the military, and the patriots. They'll just simply turn the power off for a year in most areas of the country, and then the general public will beg for UN troops in phase two. I'm trying to stop that. We're going to go to break with Gravedigger. We're going to come back with your phone calls, but we're going to look at everything happening with the border and more. Chicken pox outbreak puts illegal immigrant facility on lockdown. Colorado overwhelmed by immigrant license request. They give them licenses. Illegals. Immigrants to be housed in suites near San Antonio with cable, flat screen TVs, beauty salon, you name it. Immigrant detention center, again, has hair salon. Again, this is a magnet to suck them up here to overwhelm the welfare system and collapse it. They're just being used. And so we're not just digging the grave on the republic. We're digging the grave on prosperity. We're digging the grave on stability. And we're bringing in a very scary world. All because the general public didn't think they had any power or didn't want to change anything. If a child is missing, the FBI comes in and shuts down an entire town, searching everyone and putting black X's on their hands at highway checkpoints. It's not like they get a tip that the child's coming down a certain road and then you block it. That'd be probable cause. No, we just checkpoints at every exit of the town, search everyone. And of course, it doesn't find the child. Just like locking down half of Boston and searching everyone didn't find the Patsy who was in a boat outside the ring that they were searching, but it's control. But the border's wide open, thousands of kids have been missing and dug up in mass graves, thousands. Look it up, just on the Texas border. Oh, there's no checkpoints down there. You know, I mean, there's not gonna be any, oh, you're illegal, let us put you on a bus and bus you wherever you wanna go. Rahm Emanuel wants you. It's all a giant fraud. Oh, we're gonna spy on everything you do warrantlessly to keep you safe from Al Qaeda. Oh, really, who runs Al Qaeda? Who who funds them? Who gives them missiles? Oh, we do. We're Homeland Security. We're NATO. And then now at these facilities that the illegals are being held at here in Texas, it's in the news today, they call them residents. So first, don't call them illegal aliens. Just call them aliens. Then don't call them immigrants. Call them migrants. And now you just call them above the law. And again, nothing against the people themselves. They're absolutely desperate. They're absolutely like Obama phone lady. I'm, I'm being honest to her to her face. She just doesn't know anything but the state. And then it's game over. Obama gave us a phone. He gonna do more.
And so a lot of black folks in the inner city are mad at Obama right now because he's helping the illegals and not them. That's because they, you know, you got to put a worm on a hook to catch a fish. They, he already caught you. The globalist already caught you. They're, but don't worry. There's not going to be a worm on the line once they catch him. And the country's almost there, almost ready to be fully butchered. And they got the whole police state ready for the collapse. And the cops will be like, the government said it was going to collapse. And they were right. Boy, the central government knows what's going on. Yeah, it's like arsonists that call the fire department and say the house is on fire. I mean, it, it, it's just so sick and so transparent. And hey, where's the apologies to old Alex Jones out there? All the neocons and all the liberals and all of you. I mean, it's all happening. Why is the federal government accommodating people who are crossing in illegally with activities like basketball and ping pong and flat screen TVs in their rooms? And how does the federal government expect folks back in Central America to see these images through national news and think that it's dangerous to cross? While residents are here at the Carnes County Residential Facility, we will provide a safe and humane environment. Now, I want to explain something. We're going to go break and come back with your calls. I want to explain something here. If you go see the movie Elysium that's open border propaganda, they just swipe a card and suddenly the whole third world can live forever and be rich and live on space stations. And it's the same thing. If you can get here, you're going to be in heaven. That's not really true. And in the movie, it's children that are sick, and that's the reason that the you know, the bad guys on Elysium need to be dealt with, because they don't want to take care of the poor children. And the Democrats have said on MSNBC, Melissa Harris Perry, that we're, they are using kids to sell the end of the border. They're quite honest. They know how bleeding heart America is compared to everybody else. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com.